the home underground. Peter begged Wendy to get better quickly so he could show her the wonders of Neverland, but she could not answer because she was winded by the fall. When the boys told Peter of Tink's crime, he looked very stern. Listen, Tinkerbell, he cried, I'm not your friend anymore. Go from here forever. Tink flew to his shoulder and begged, and when Wendy raised her arm again to please for the fairy, Peter gave in and said, it would only be for one week. But what should be done with Wendy? Let's carry her into our home, said Curly. No, said Peter, she's too ill. We must build a house around her. Boys, bring all the best things from our home. Just then, John and Michael found the little gathering and were put to work too. The boys made walls from branches, a mossy roof and a yellow leaf curtain from the windows. The sole of two tools shoe became the door knocker and John's hat the chimney. After Wendy had rested for a little while, the boys knocked on her door. When she came outside, they all went down on their knees and cried, Oh, Wendy, lady, please be our mother. Wendy wasn't sure she had never been a mother. But Peter said that they just needed a nice motherly person, which was exactly what Wendy was. So she agreed. The next day, Peter measured Wendy, John and Michael for their own hollow trees, the only way to get into the home under the ground. Each tree had to fit its owner perfectly, or else they couldn't get up and down. Once you were fitted, you drew in your breath at the top and down you went, into the secret house. To get back up, you had to breathe out and wiggle back up. And so the darling children began their life in the home under the trees. It was really one large room with a huge never tree growing in the middle. Every morning the boys soared through the trunk, making it level with the floor. And by tea time it was always two feet high, so it was a perfect dinner table. At night they let down a huge bed and the boys slept in it like sardines in a tin. Tink slept in her own little room, a shelf in the wall, decorated in the height of fairy fashion. Everyone was happy in the home under the trees. Adventures happened daily, and to tell them all would be a book large as a dictionary. But we do have just enough time for the tale of the Mermaid Lagoon. <laughs>